full study. Romans chapter 1, verse 21. Because they, because that when they knew God, they glorify him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart. Foolish heart, let's stop there for a moment. We read in Psalms that the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. We have studied that atheism is not in the mindset, it's in the heart. Here is a foolish heart was darkened. No light. And we're not talking about that physical thing in your body goes bump, 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 bump. The next fool professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like unto corruptible man and to birds and four footed beasts and creepy things. So we look at the first two fools of this study. And we see the perfect foolishness of the education system that teaches evolution that birds and monkeys and dinosaurs and no creation by God. That an evolutionist and a theistic evolutionist according to the Bible, are fools. They deny God. He says, because when they knew God, every man is born with the knowledge of God. You have to be trained, you have to be educated out of the simple belief in God. I don't know if we're going to get far on this one today. But as a little boy growing up in a little place called New London, Connecticut with my friends. We would sacrifice worms to a God. We knew there was a God. We would lay out and look at the stars in the heavens and know somebody created that. And then also helped. Uh, I was brought up Catholic. You know, there is, you know, a God in the Catholic Church. There's Jesus. But a fool here, because that when they knew God, all men had the knowledge of God. They glorify him not as God. He's a big bang. He's a fossil. He's a monkey. He's an amoeba. He's the great I am the man. Neither were thankful. And it's a big joke today in this country. We have one day but decoration by George Washington one day to give thanks to God for our pilgrim fathers in this country and there's no 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 day of all days that be not thankful to God because we got to hurry up and get ready for Black Friday and we've got to work on, on Thanksgiving now because we got to get more money and it's a big joke to think today in 2019 that people are going to crowd around the table and ask the blessing from God they don't even know how to how to prepare a table. They don't even know how to cook today. They're gonna have prepared meals. They don't know where their food comes from. People today grow up that think that their food comes from a refrigerator section in the grocery store. The great I am, the man, is not so. Became vain in their imagination. Well, I think. Here's a monkey trail of, you know, from, from the little, little palm scum to here I am the great eight. With no proof, many gaps, and their foolish heart were dark, no light. And the Bible says Jesus is like John chapter 1. In the beginning was the word. They have no word in their beginning. They have assumptions, they have theories, they have ideas, but they have no conclusion as with God in his word. Professing themselves to be wise with scholarships and, and PhDs and doctors and educators and, and colleges and archaeology and all the things of man can give to man to make man look like a dope. Wise they became fools. And remember throughout the book of Proverbs when we studied the fool we had wise in contrast to the fool. The fool in contrast to the wise. God says, hey, you're wise. 
but you're full. A man may get up on a blackboard or whatever they use today and come up with all the theories and all the equations and all the formulas and come out to a, an answer that I cannot do or solve or even think about and have that knowledge to churn fossil fuels into gasoline, diesel, petroleum products and have that capability of running a nuclear reactor so people can have electricity, the ability to go out and say, this is what we need to do to attack our enemy. This is what we need to do to make an automobile. You may have all that intelligence. You may have all that skill that you are the great CEO of this great fast food chain and you get all the money pouring in. But if you don't know God like I know God, you're a fool. You're a fool. You're the man that said, oh, so look how great I am. I'll tear everything down and I'll build me storage units. I'll rent them out. I'll get more money. And God says, thou fool. Remember when we studied that in Matthew? Foolish people deny God. That is one stance since 1987, of April 7th. I have not taken and will not take. There is a God. There is a Jesus Christ. Jesus is God. And God is Jesus. And Jehovah Witnesses are fools. When Catholics say there's other ways to God, they're fools. But the one that says Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, no man comes unto the Father but by him, that's wise. Wise men will find themselves at their death to be absent from the body, present with the Lord. When the rapture happens, they will find themselves caught up in the clouds with them who are also wise. Foolish people will die and be buried and wake up in hell. That's the division. And I am talking about just as much as a theistic evolution, though, say he won't go to hell, but he's a fool. He's denying God. He's denying the scriptures. Plain and simple. The foolish heart does not want to know God. And they do not seek God with their heart. And it gets darker and darker. The more you go away from God, the darker it's going to get. Psalms 14, 1, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works, abomination, that there is none do it good. Insight that with what we just read in Romans chapter 1. 21 and 22. Again, just to make sure you, you don't miss it. Psalm 53 verse 1 to the chief musician. A psalm of David, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Evolution says there is no God. Not the God of the Bible. Now their God may be monkey man. My, money, my monkey's uncle might be Lucy. They love Lucy. But that's not God. That's not the truth. When you teach that, that we come from nothing, and here we are through the ape scale, you're lying. Corrupt are they. And have abominable iniquity. There's none that do it good. Now look what we just read here. And in Romans 1.22, they're smart fools. Smart by their own education and thoughts. Now, wouldn't it be a joke, as you turn to Romans chapter 2, verse 20, wouldn't it be a joke? Now, I don't know. I'm speculating. Sometimes I, I, I believe God's in a great sense of humor. Wouldn't it be a joke when we get to heaven, those that are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, those who have obeyed what God told them to do, Isaac, Abraham, Jacob, wouldn't it be a joke if we got to heaven to realize what we thought was not what it was? I mean, wouldn't it be great if, if all the doctors that did get saved and are saved get to heaven and God says, listen, let me tell you, you had it all wrong. I'm the one that made the body. Let me tell you about the body. 
You know, when we give credit to man, we're all wrong. The credit goes to God. Romans 2.20 An instructor of foolish, a teacher of babes, which has the form of knowledge and the form of and of the truth in the law. He's talking to Jews. After the prophecy, the Messiah shows up and rejects him. You teach the people from the law and the prophets. The Jewish people, after the Messiah came up in the 48 prophecies, if not more, were fulfilled 100%. If everything that was documented in the scriptures about Jesus Christ for the first advent had been documented, had fulfilled, has been seen before their eyes, and that he has suffered and he has died, he, he has been buried and he arose again, and he has testified to be alive, that he is the light of the Jewish people. And to walk away from the 12 disciples, the 12 apostles through the book of Acts, and to keep on going the way you're doing. And Paul addresses this in some churches. They're saved. They, they're saved by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, but they were deceived to go back into the law. And they'll teach, they'll get up there and say, oh, you can't do this on the Sabbath. You know, church is for the Sabbath. You can't have this food. You can't have this food. You can do this. And Paul says, you're an instructor of the foolish because you have not rightly divided the word of truth. When the Bible says, study and show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be shamed, but rightly divided the word of truth. When you teach doctrines that are deceiving the people, whatever it be, if it's not according to the scriptures, you are a structure of the foolish. You are leading people in the foolish. When we've studied again, and I've already said this, there's a contrast between wise and between foolish. They're not the same. A fool become, can become wise. A wise man can become a fool, but they're not the one in the same. I have done foolish acts. I have found through this study that I have been the fool. Well, you're a Christian. Yeah, but when I stepped into the realm of foolishness, I stepped back into the flesh. I stepped back into being a sinner. When I played the fool, when I was the fool, I was not in the spirit. I was not in the Holy Spirit. I was not of the realm of God. I was in the realm of the flesh and the devil and myself and the world. You can't combine the two like you cannot combine the flesh and the spirit. They're enmity each other. And Christians try to do that. Today, the world is being used to entertain the fact that, I said you were entertained purposely, we can bring people to Jesus by using the worldly means. And there's a sorry deception and you are an instructor of the foolish. I think a lot of people of this church age in 2019, years to follow and years to come, people who are going to think they're saved, and by the products and by the procedures and by the programs and by what the church is doing, they're not truly saved. And Jesus said, woe well, unto that. And then when you instruct that person in the way of unrighteousness, teaching them that you think it's right, you're a fool. The aim of crowds and fame will bring you down to foolishness. You've got to rightly divide the word of truth. The Bible says study. How do you study? You read. You don't read, you digest the word of God. Studying the word of God and digesting the word of God brings you what? It brings you to the knowledge of the holy. And when you come to knowledge of the holy, then you know what's right and wrong by what's stared, by the Bible. And when you use the Bible rightfully as a scale in any, any particular instance yourself or someone else, you're doing that which is wise. Romans chapter 10 verse 19. Romans 10, 19, but I say, did not Israel know? First, Moses said, I provoked you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by a foolish nation 
I will anger you. Foolish nation. Who's that? Gentile. That's me. That's Polish. That is Italian. That's African. That's Indians. That's Chinese. That's Russian. That's American. That's Native American. That's Peruvians, or whatever you call them, that's Hawaiian. We are foolish nations in the eyes of God. What do we do? We go out in the woods, we cut down a tree, we bring it in, Jeremiah 10, we deck it with gold and silver, we bow down before our old holy tree. And we're so foolish to find out, oh, the realm of Christianity, oh, we can bring Jesus Christ into that tree. In the realm of the, the foolish nations of the Gentile, oh, we can worship gold and we can worship silver. We can worship a rock. We can worship paper. We can worship a tree. We can worship anything but God, and God is so pleased with us. The foolishness of the nations of Judah, as our family study will be tonight in Second Chronicles, is he goes into battle. God gives him victory. And he picks up the losing idols. He picks up the losing gods and says, Oh, you're my gods. They're losers. That's foolish. Now, I'm not going to quote this correctly, but to the instances, you know, you fool me once, shame on me. Or shame on you. Yeah. You fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. I knew I was going to get that right. We are foolish without Jesus Christ. We, as a Gentile people, and you see it throughout the Bible, we got this weird thing. We got this fish head God that, you know, he's appropriate God. Though he's fallen down, though he's been cut in pieces, and he's fallen down before the ark of God twice, we'll put him back up and we'll add more rules and regulations to it. And then the Gentiles today, we're so great, we're there, number one, oh, look how great we are. God says, you're foolish. Because you don't have the knowledge of the Holy. You don't have the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ to receive him as your personal Savior. Religions in the world today of the Gentiles are foolish. You think by taking a piece of bread and a cup of, of, of alcoholic beverage that you're going to magic trick change that into a god you ever look back to think how foolish that is that you are in the realms outside the bible but you're in the realms of the cannibalism and you will mock the people who kill human beings and eat their bodies and then drink their blood but yet you do it what you call the mess you think it's a foolish nation where you are India and you are starving to death. You are going on television and say, please give us money for food. And you've got plenty of cows running around, but that may be grandma and grandpa. Eat the cow. Maybe grandma and grandpa doesn't want to be a cow no more. If you kill them, they'll be something else. Maybe a mosquito, you slap them in your arm. Isn't that foolish? Think about it. You're starving to death, but you've got hamburger walking around, but you can't kill it because it may be a god. Your god is two patties, a quarter beef between two... That's your god? That's your god that everybody else in the world, all the other Gentiles, eat? We seem to have a problem with gods and eating. Seems to be a dietary problem with the foolish Gentiles. Of eating. And what are you going to do? Foolish nations. Oh, and here's how it ha happened with Charlie Darwin. I'm looking at a pond or a puddle of water. Oh, there's little things crawling around in there. That's where we came from. Mosquitoes. My wife's got tadpoles out, out in, the, in the backyard on the table. I mean, you, you, I'm going to look at tadpoles and say, oh, they are going to grow up to be humans one day. Honey, please put them in a bigger container because when they become adults, 
that's not enough room for them. Nonsense. They're going to grow up to be frogs or toads and nothing else. And that foolishness that is taught today in school comes from Gentiles that are foolish. We are in the realm of foolishness. Religion is foolish. Because when it comes to Gentiles, there's Gentiles are classified as one great definition. Are you Jewish of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. No? Then you're a Gentile. Ishmael? Gentile. Esau, Edomites, Gentile. Moab, Gentile. Assyrians, Gentile. Italians, Gentile. Europeans, Gentile. Asians, Gentile. And you look at the Gentile realm of the entire world outside the one people called Israel and all the religions where you got that, that, that virgins being sacrificed to the volcano god that never shuts up his mouth. And all the realms of, of religion that surround and the education of Gentiles today in America are teaching the realms of religion in school, but they won't allow God, Jesus Christ, in the King James Bible. That's foolish. And then they got the nerve to ask themselves, why are all our kids turning out like this? Why is our economy ruined? Why are we killing each other? Why is there such violence? God said, as in the days of Noe, Noah, well, let, let's go over here and look. Shall we in Genesis? I don't have the exact chapter. But let's see. God said, as in the days of Noe, Genesis chapter. Nine or eight. All right, Genesis chapter 6. As in the days of Noah, verse 5, Genesis 6 5, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Is that not a classification today? And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart, that's what we just read in Romans, was only evil continually and it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart, God's heart and the Lord said I will destroy man who I created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creepy thing and the fowls of the air and repented me that I had made man made them well that's kind of interesting that's very interesting because we are in that state today we are a wicked abomination of thoughts and ideas. But we're not finished with the reading yet, are we? Verse 11. And the earth was, and the earth also was corrupt by, before God, and the earth was filled with violence. Verse 13. And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. Oh, so if we have read and studied our Bible, we would know that the violence that's happening today is preparing us to the days of Noah. And people had other ideas outside of Noah, or Noe, Matthew. He preached, the Bible says. And he preached, get in the ark, get in the safety of God, and they had other ideas as they do today. And they made fun of the preachers as they do today. One man stood against the entire world. And eight people were saved. With pairs or by seven. So we have a foolish thought here that we are going to build the ark in 
America and pay people have people pay us to come and see the art by four or five verses of the actual description of the art that they would know what animals and how many animals were there. Though the Bible doesn't say, it just says by pairs and by sevens, and that's a foolish group of people we built, you know, we built the ark. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be shamed rightly by the word of truth. No Christian is told to build an ark. They're told to go in all the world and preach the gospel. Well, we present the gospel. If you're doing it by instructor of foolishness, by building something you don't even really know, then you're wrong. And today's Christianity is foolish. We're going to make right wrong, and we're going to make wrong right, and bring that wrong that's right into the churches and do wrong. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Many Christians in this church age are going to find out the judgment seat of Christ, you're a fool. And be very careful because the Bible says he's going to give us a new name. I would hate to have a name in heaven forever and glory forever and ever that would eliminate any wisdom that God would give you a name that would be classified as foolish, fool, foolish, or folly. Or worse thought than that is I'm going to go to glory and I'm going to have no crowns, no rewards, and no inheritance at all because I was a fool. And you'd be no different from the fools that teach evolution that are atheists. You can be an atheist, you can be an unsaved fool, and you can be a saved fool. Unsaved go to hell, saved go to heaven with no rewards, no crowns, no inheritance at all can you imagine Jesus Christ getting up at the judgment seat of Christ looking you at your face now he's not going to say depart from me you work as iniquity I never he's not going to say that to a Christian but can you imagine looking at you and saying you're an instructor of the foolish I would not want that I would not God to say a lost or saved man professing himself to be wise, they became fool. I've got me a doctorate from Baptist College. Look at me. And God tell you, yeah, that's good, but you were a fool. You couldn't understand that by Jesus Christ alone, people are saying, not by other junk. You don't understand that I gave you the English Bible. You didn't need the Hebrew and Greek. Man, God is not a man that passes titles. Now you may say, Stalin, you, you apply the title DD on your thing. Yeah. On my public work and stuff like that, I do. I earned that degree. But I don't ravish in it. I don't go out in the public, you know, you got to call me doctor. There are men out there right now that go out there, you have to call them Dr. So-and-so, you have to give, no. We are in the realm of religion and education with science of today's fool. That an unsaved fool will teach you foolish things. And a Christian who saved can get into teaching foolish things. One goes to hell, one goes to heaven. What about the people that sat under them? There are under the, 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 the quotes of Christian or quotes of church. There are people who are sat under a teacher, or a preacher, whatever you want to call them. And they believe by the teaching and by the preaching of that man, they are saved to what that church and what that man said. 
what that man, what that, what that church, what that teaching has said has been contradictory to what the Bible says. What do you do then? Fullest aspect today is do not teach that which is wrong. Do not deceive others. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. Study and read your Bible so you can give the right answer. Listen, sometimes the best right answer is, I've done it. Ready? I don't know. You want me to? I'll go look into it. A lot better give me something that's untrue and make people believe, oh, how great thou art. And you're not. You're foolish. You're foolish. If it's not correct, if it's wrong, by our study today, you're a fool. Plain and simple.